Many of the hurtful and hateful things that we experience today were happening in the church of Corinth 2,000 years ago. And the Apostle Paul was so fed up that he sent a letter calling everybody out saying, you guys have to learn to love. And in what became the most beautiful chapter of the entire Bible, he lays out the fundamentals of true love. Number one, love is patient, meaning love is long-tempered, not necessarily toward the issues, although it can be, but especially towards people, which means as Christians, we don't tune people out, we don't cut them off, and even when we're inconvenienced or taken advantage of, we never lash out in retaliation. And number two, love is kind, which is the opposite of patient. Whereas patient was our response, kindness is actually our action, where we step out and showcase goodwill. Just like Jesus said, if anyone sues to take your shirt, go ahead and just give them your coat also. And number three, love is not jealous. Meaning just like oil and vinegar at the Italian restaurant, love and jealousy just can't go together. And I'm sure you know this, but there will always be somebody out there who's a little better, a little bigger, a little brighter, and a little prettier than you or I. And love means we're gonna be happy for them anyway. Number four is that love never brags. And in our age of selfies and social media, we need to hear this, that as Christians, we can boast, we should boast, but that boast must always be in Christ alone. And number five, love is not rude, referring to our sarcasm, our wit, and our double innuendo, where we may dominate a room with our mouth, but actually forfeit our relationship with others. I still remember a seminary prof who once said, men be statesmen, adorn the gospel and make it beautiful. And number six, love is not selfish. And here's the ultimate relationship killer. If you want to struggle in your marriage, if you want to struggle with your kids, if you want to struggle with coworkers or on a team, just become the inflexible, stubborn guy, like those diva wide receivers in the NFL who can only run their play. And number seven, love is not provoked, which just means explosion, convulsion, or outburst to the man or woman who lives on a hair trigger. I recall one man who said, I blow up, but it's only for a second. And his buddy responded, yeah, so does a nuke. The damage was done. And number eight, love keeps no record, which just means there's no account sheet, no bank ledger. Love literally wipes the past clean and provides a new canvas for the relationship to restart. And number nine, love doesn't rejoice in wrong. And certainly this means we'll never cheer evil, a friend leaving his wife or a coworker who's viewing porn or the wives gossiping about their husbands at Chick-fil-A. But it also means we don't gloat over misfortune, reveling when our enemy loses his pension or laughing when the president struggles with dementia. And number 10, love rejoices in truth, which just means reality, verity, what corresponds to actual facts, which is why we're vocal about things like LGBTQIA and others, life at conception, two genders, the unbiblical nature of evolution, not because we want to harm people, but because we actually want to help them. Number 11, love bears all things, which is the idea of covering, protecting, not being a sprinkler for gossip, a shower of hot takes. We're careful with the news that could hurt or harm somebody. And you may say, well, how do I know if I'm a gossip? Well, if you're not part of the problem and you're not part of the solution, well, the news isn't yours to share. And number 12, love believes all things. Meaning we don't walk around suspicious or cynical and questioning motives or throwing out terminal terms like you always or you never. And number 13, love hopes all things. A comprehensive statement for never giving up, whether it's a prodigal child or an unbelieving spouse or a wayward church member. So long as there is life, there's chance. Which leads to the last one, number 14, love endures all things. Meaning I'll do all of those things that were just mentioned, even if you don't do them back to me, and I'm never gonna stop. A beautiful picture of this love comes from Cromwell's reign, when a young soldier was sentenced to die at the curfew bell. So around 10 p.m., the sexton went to ring the bell, but no sound came out. What no one knew was that the young man's fiance had climbed the belfry and was holding the clapper on the inside. So while the two ton bell swung, she was being hit against the sides until finally she fell battered and bloodied and bruised and was taken to Cromwell pleading for the life of her love. And famously, Cromwell commuted the sentence saying, quote, there'll be no curfew tonight. Of course, there's an even greater example of love, the ultimate example of love. He was patient, kind, not jealous or rude, not selfish or easily provoked. He never rejoiced in wrong, always rejoiced in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endured all things. I'm sure you know who that is. So I have to ask, are you growing in love? Look back on the last year. Is all of that you? Patient, kind, not rude, undemanding? Wiping the record clean, avoiding the wrong, applauding the right, bearing, believing, and hoping? If so, 
rest assured, you're becoming more like Christ.